Good morning, ladies. <coughs> Welcome back to another menopausal morning. <laughs> Diana Johnson back again. To guide you through more shit you can expect <laughs> in your change of life. Video number seven in the series is a bit of a menopausal enigma. We like to call Exercise apathy. While many of the girls in our group have managed to stay or get fit prior to menopause, many of us find ourselves in poor physical condition at our halfway point. And while our doctors and partners and families and friends never stop talking about how we're killing ourselves by drinking gallons of soda and eating tons of greasy fat food while we sit around on our swelling asses, sometimes we can lack the self-motivation to try for a healthier lifestyle. We can all agree that our lives are at stake and our problems will only get worse if we don't change our eating and exercise habit. But sometimes we just lack the give a damn to make it happen. This is the exercise apathy. You may find yourself in the company of well-meaning friends who've managed to get you to attend their yoga, spin, crossfit, kickboxing, Pilates step aerobic gym, only to find yourself leaning on equipment in the corner, winded, muscles a-twitch, vessels throbbing, wishing for a small electrical fire to break out so that you can quit and go home. Or maybe you've made a deal with yourself to try when engaged in such sports, only to find out that your shit isn't built that way and you can't breathe through a stretch if it means bending at the waist. We've all heard the encouraging words of enthusiastic trainers that say we need to modify the exercise to suit our own fitness level. No two people are built the same. Not everyone has the same endurance, flexibility, or strength. But if you're like me, your subliminal response to this enthusiasm is always the same. I was enjoying my own level of fitness. Laying on my couch with my head in a bag of classic Lay's, drinking my poison Coca-Cola, and watching old Maureen O'Hara movies. Make no mistake, girls. These fitness gurus, they can hear your thoughts. They know from whence you've come. The simple fact is, you may have to wait for your first couple of heart attacks to shake this apathetic attitude before the choices become clear to you. And it's important here to recognize two facts. Number one, not everybody has two heart attacks in them. Some of the more unhealthy among us can't make it back after the first one. So if you're waiting for this to inspire you, you might want to examine your luck so far. Do you really want to tempt the gods? And number two, you may have a death wish and be in dire need of psychiatric counseling before you can start working on a healthy body. For sure, even if you have a million reasons, aka excuses, for not starting to gravitate toward better health, you must stop for a moment and engage in some healthier self-talk. We are valuable. We are beautiful. And we are loved or these assholes wouldn't keep hounding us to take better care of ourselves. And if we are carrying around the heaviness of hate under our skin, we need to examine that and make sure that it's not turned inwardly toward us. Can we really be this out of shape because of someone else? No. We are slobby blobs because we choose to be for whatever reason. What is really keeping you unhealthy and unfit? Low self-worth is the leading cause of exercise apathy. Self-loathing kills. Don't fall victim to this trap. We women are strong and menopausal women are relentless. So perhaps we need to do some soul searching and learn how to treat ourselves better. Whatever advice you'd give to your best friend to turn this apathy into action, take for yourself. Treat your body as respectfully and carefully as you would those of the ones you love. So I challenge you to start thinking about what improvements you could make in your own fitness level. And as usual, I'm not here to recommend any specific diet or exercise plan. I'm just trying to help you find the strength to decide yourself that you're worth a healthy body at any age. Because chances are you'll survive the chaos of menopause. And wouldn't it be fabulous to emerge from the fire gorgeous and fit? So let's try to get out there and go through our days with compassion in our hearts and peace in our minds. And until next Monday, I send you peace and the love, the menopause.